Hi, it's time for another mad easy solution to and discuss uh, the precise definition of infinite limits at infinity and now look at a useful example to uh, basically better illustrate the a video I did uh, in my last video on this uh, precise definition of an infinite limits at infinity. Well, the, the first, well, the example I'm going to do is this one here, example one. Prove using the precise definition that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function 1 plus x cubed equals infinity. Now, before I get to the proof, I just want to quickly recap on a precise definition. I'm not going to go over too in, in detail, but you can see that in the video link below on this to get uh, more information. Basically, uh, the definition states let f be a function defined on some open interval or just an interval, I guess, from a to infinity, then limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity. And this means that for every positive number greater than zero, uh, number m, there's a corresponding positive number n such that f of x is greater than m whenever x is greater than n. So yes, yeah, just make sure you watch the video on this in more detail. Uh, I'll, I'll illustrate this a bit more as I go through the example. So to prove this, all we have to do actually is to find that uh, well, this n value uh, works here, and, and well, I'll, I'll first get to that. So I'll, I'll just put this in the form of the precise definition. So in this case, we have f of x is equal to one plus x cubed. So now we will have f of x. So to, to prove that the definition, I know, yeah, to prove that the limit of this approaches uh, in infinity as x approaches infinity, we just have to make sure that the precise definition applies. So f of x is greater than m or I'll just write that down, 1 plus x cubed is greater than m whenever we have, yeah, whenever x is greater than n. Now since m is any value, so we'll just write any number greater than zero, in this case it is positive, so we have this, we just need to f make sure or prove that this value exists so that this n exists. And remember, this, this depends on m. So this just means that we'll always have an n for any m value we have. We'll have it. We'll have this case here. So now to uh, prove this, well, we could just rearrange this inequality to get. If I write it over here, well, if we just move move the x by itself, we're gonna have actually. We'll just take the m first away. So we'll have x cubed greater than m minus one. And now if we just take this cubed out, so we'll have x is greater than this is gonna be m minus one. Uh, to the power of 1 over 3. So we just took uh, just to the power of uh, 1 divided by 3 on both sides and to cancel this out. So we get this and as you can see this actually equals to n right here. So we found this and this is basically our proof. Remember the abstract, this is really abstract. To get, so just get, watch my earlier videos to get your head around why uh, this is a proof. But basically now if I were to draw, so what this is saying actually any m value I pick, I will find an n value that's greater than zero. This one's greater than zero, obviously, because, uh, well, if this is, let's just say x is really, really, really large, or m is really large, so x is greater than zero, n is greater than zero, so I'm in m right here. So if m is really, really large, etc., this is going to be a large number, so x is going to be greater than zero, and, and also n is going to be a positive number greater than zero as the definition states right there. So now if we were to graph this, yeah, and if we were to draw or graph this out, I have this graph the Google Calculator right here. As you can see, it goes to infinity as x approaches infinity. So you could clearly see that it is going to infinity. You could even just put really large numbers in this. All you can do is get really large. But to be precise, using that definition, so now basically if you were to draw a, let's say, a line across like this, Yes, yeah, like this, and we call this m, then we're going to have a corresponding number here. This is our n value. And, and as you can yeah, see from the, the precise definition, so that basically when you're to the right of this, or x is greater than n, and we have this value. So we already have this, so that's our proof. And basically when x is greater than this, as you can see from here, our f of x is greater than, than uh, let's write this, f of x is greater than uh, m right here. Yeah, so this is greater than m. So that's all it's saying. And in this, and in this case, we can actually calculate what the n is based on what our m is. Yeah. So if we knew our m value, we'll just pick any m value of greater than zero. So pick m equals to twenty-eight. Then we could find our n values. It's going to be well, m minus uh, yeah, minus one to the power of one over three. And this equals to well, twenty-eight uh, or twenty-seven minus one. 1 over 3, and this equals 2, well, just 3. 
So this means at 28, somewhere around here, you're going to get to 3 right here in 68. It is pretty much that. And it's going to have to be greater than this 3 for f of x to be greater than 28. Well, that's all for today. I uh, hope you learned from uh, this useful example. It's, numbers, it's abstract. Once you get her head around the precise definition, it's pretty straightforward. Remember, you can also download these notes in the Dropbox link below. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.